Christian Ponder, quarterback, Florida State. Coming to you now in mid-quality audio, brought to you in part by FNS Delivers. From your Vikings game day headquarters, right Mandarin at the Eden Ferry Center. It's football talk like you've never heard before. Get ready for America's favorite Minnesota Vikings podcast. With your host, Sticky. I really hated what he did. I hope he starts on fire. And Bun. You have gotten naked and are standing right in front of me and are doing thrust. It's the Sticky Buns Fun Time Happy Football Program. Ladies and gentlemen, Sticky and Bun. Are you really? I think that's right. Sure seems to be. Am I loud? This is a test. This is a test. This is a test. <laughs> your your testing skills, uh, I believe, have diminished as we progress through the weeks. <laughs> Although, I mean, it's weird though because at first your testing was test, and then you be quiet, <laughs> which doesn't help me at all. Well, I was more interested in looking at that because I'm more interested in my testing for my own purposes. What? Do we want to start the podcast this way? <laughs> we can if you want. I'm always in favor of listening to you be you. That's why I do this podcast. and because Not that I listen to it, because I get to live it. You do get to live it. I get 100% of Nick. Well, fine then. Are we just going to go? Why not? You right. don't like it when I count down. <laughs> no, I want you to count down, but I want it to be recorded. I don't want you to just count down when no one gets the pleasure of it. Well, there's no countdown this week. They get to listen to our test. I don't even remember what I said to begin with during the test, so I hope it was witty and charming and funny. It uh, probably wasn't. Probably not. They're all focusing on you, as they should. So, so some sad news today. Uh, we have sad news today? Yes. What's the sad news? Anthony Barr is done for the season. Yeah, I guess. I mean... You don't consider that... I was... I knew there was a good chance he wasn't coming back just because it was late in the season and stuff, but I right. was still hoping he'd play one more game, just... I don't think you actually I, thought that since you dropped him in fantasy football. I dropped him because I needed a player. You basically didn't care about him at all. I cared about winning, and he there was is, playing. You can't tell me there's no one on your bench you could have dropped in order to pick up a fourth defensive player. I don't know. I don't have much of a bench anymore. Do you even have a team? I'm not Are sure. Are you still playing? My other fantasy team got screwed this week. <laughs> uh, let's let's talk about that. Let's, let's, let's d- delve into fantasy football for a second. Tell me why you got screwed. I have a feeling we got screwed in the same fashion. Cutler is out. My other choices are Andy Dalton and Teddy Bridgewater. Okay. That means Matt Forte's numbers will probably be down. Wouldn't they lean on him? Don't you think that's the... I just don't think they'll have many offensive plays. Um, I think they'll be very frequently on defense. What I... They play the Lions? Yes. Yeah, they won't be frequently on defense because they can't stop anybody. So it would be weird. It might be like a normal game, only twice as many times on offense and defense for the Chicago Bears. Right? You know what I mean? I think their offense just isn't going to go forward. Also, that means um, Michael Bennett is not going to have a great day. Who's Michael Bennett? You mean the running back for the Minnesota Vikings from a long time ago, number 23? Mark. What is his name? Martellius Bennett? Yes, that guy. You're and then my other running back is Murray, who had surgery on Monday. Yeah, but he's going to play. It doesn't make any sense to me that he's going to play. He's been That doesn't mean he's going to be as good. He's been practicing all week. I can't believe I just said that. And they told him, if you want to play, it's going to be completely up to you. And he said, I'm playing. That doesn't mean he's going to get as many carries or be as good as he normally would be. That's probably a true statement. But why? You have fantasy news of your own you want to share? I was on the cusp of getting back to the the championship. 
the beautiful round of two where only one can survive. I needed in our our league to tell the the wonderful listener probably that we have. Uh, we have the most awesome scoring system in the history of mankind. Would you say that in a normal fantasy league, it's a hundred is like the tops you get? Not the tops, but a hundred is generally a good score. Sure, but it's it's not uncommon to be below that, right? No, it's not. Okay, and have you looked at our scores from a week to week basis? A good score is about three hundred. <laughs> I actually, I think one of our one of the teams got to three fifty, which is just stupid retarded. It's awesome. It's awesome. I'm I'm the one who designed it. And J. Effing Cutler, all he had to do on Monday night, on my birthday, was he had to score below average. <laughs> I needed him. His average is like 23 points in this league. I needed him to score 10. So I was even less than 50% of his average. I'm golden. I'm in. I talked to a couple of their teams, and they're like, congratulations, you're in. I even crap-talked the opposing team, and he even said, you're in. This is not this is not going to work out for me. And he scored four. <laughs> four. Uh, that's amusing. That is not amusing. That cost me a chance at hundreds of dollars. Yeah. I will never trust... Cutler on my birthday ever again. But that only would have gotten you to the championship game. You would have been screwed in the championship game because he's benched anyhow. That's true, but we only look at it from a week-to-week basis. It's kind of like imagining that the Vikings made it to the Super Bowl in 2009 and then realizing that you probably wouldn't have had Brett Favre or uh, uh, Cedric Griffin or you know some other key players. Actually, Sidney Rice also got hurt, so you would have you wouldn't have won. But that's not the point. The point is you got there, and I could still have won hundreds of dollars in second place. Now I, I can't. Do we have Joe Webb backing up Favre back then? No, no. We had Tavares Jackson, Joe Webb point five. Because Joe Webb that's is a, a good way of describing him. <laughs> Joe Webb is a much more improved Tavares Jackson, even though Tavares Jackson has a ring. Which should tell you that Joe Webb has a future in this league, uh, since he's still somehow on a roster. Um, yeah. So, that happened. Um, other, did you have a good birthday? On my birthday itself, I worked a lot, and then Jay Cutler shit all over me. Um, <laughs> the day before I had a really good birthday... Uh, I'm pretty sure I I drank too much. Actually, I had some moments on my birthday that were... I want to use the word pleasurable, but it's not in the way you're anticipating it. I just had a really... There were some really nice times. I enjoyed myself. Okay, good. I'm glad. I went to the strip club on Sunday. Uh, It's a... let Let me rephrase that. The restaurant, the strip club, it's not even like that. It's known for steak. Strip, get it? Uh, I had a really nice steak, which they told me was medium rare, and I, I've been in the food for a long time. The center of this steak, while it was incredibly delicious, so don't get me wrong, I loved every minute of it, uh, was not medium rare. Medium rare is, a, is pinkish with a sliver of really pink. This had a cube. It wasn't pink. It was purple. Like, you just cut this off the mother effing cow. And you grilled the outside, which was delicious, again. And the center was still delicious, but that was not medium rare. And she warned me, but I was like, I've been in food forever. That's not possible. I was wrong. So next time, I'll just get it medium and see how it works. Even though I liked it. So maybe I'll get it medium rare again. That's all I've got. Okay. Well, I'm glad you had a good birthday. (laughs) Thank you. Um... The game was much closer than I expected, but I was still right. You were, unfortunately. I never like saying you're right. I know. In fact, I hate you deep inside. I blame you. You left early when we were mounting a comeback. No, because Teddy 
missed a wide open Jerry's right. How do you feel about the fact that Teddy really was to blame for that loss? Teddy, Teddy, Teddy. Ah, uh, I'm not. Yeah, I think he did some poor things. I don't know that I would blame him for the loss. I think I feel like who are you going to blame then? I actually, the defense? No, because they held them. They the defense did its job. They pretty much did all they could. I mean, I think in year one of the Mike Zimmer vaunted defense with the players you have, I think that's the max output. With especially when you're missing. Sharif Floyd, you're missing Robert Blanton, who's your starting safety to that point. You're missing Anthony Barr, your freak of a linebacker. You're missing some major pieces. Um, I think you hit your ceiling. Like, you couldn't have done better. Um, especially how that started. They just couldn't, they didn't get a first down. It was no. awesome. Yeah. Uh, and for the first time, we've seen uh, a Vikings cornerback. Oh, that's right. I was shadowing to to you about that. But, okay, we'll just. We can Finish come back to thought. it. Um, <laughs> you got really excited. Yes, I am excited to talk about that. Um, so I, I don't. Yeah, Teddy had problems, but he is still a rook. Um, the the one interception was just it was bad. The other interception, uh, okay, I guess. Um, I would classify that as a fifty fifty interception. I mean, it was a poorly thrown ball, but. The Lions player did do a good job of catching it, um, since it you know was in the wrong spot. Um, I think it was more mismanagement by the coaching staff. Ooh, because well, but part of that is on Teddy. One section of it, because when you're mounting that drive and you're going for it, you only need a field goal to win. So you have everything on your side, except you didn't do very well with clock management. And there was one specific play where we let the whole thing clock down and took a delay of game penalty. That was pretty horrible. That was, you just can't do it. No. I, I put a sliver on Teddy because he needs to, now they said that he didn't, he didn't hear the whole play. Before the communication cut off. So communication cuts off at a specific point in the play clock. They just can't, which is weird. I kind of get it, but it's weird. I feel like you should be able to talk the entire time. Uh, well, I guess I guess it would be weird if the coaching could tell you where to throw it. That would make people like Tavares Jackson a good quarterback. Um, but Teddy... I have faith enough in Theodore Bridgewater that he should have just fucking called any play instead of, I don't know what to do, we'll just let it go down. Yep. Just call anything because anything is better than that. And we talked about during the game, we had the conversation where they need to have a set play after a controversial big play on the offense just yes. to run. It did not hurt them this time. I've been screaming about that for weeks. <laughs> you, every time there's a controversial play where you think it should be challenged, you scream every time the same thing. Run a play! Any play! Just run a play! <laughs> Why don't you just do just do a halfback dive? Just hand uh, it off, run straight. Yep, absolutely. I don't care if you get no yardage. Exactly. I, I've been calling for that. I really wish they would... Get that figured out. Yeah, um, it ended up being to our benefit because it cost Detroit a challenge. Not that that ended up coming back in any way whatsoever. But yeah, no. just run a play, run a fucking play. Yeah, but and if Teddy had hit that Jarius Wright pass, that was a bad one. Even Zimmer said he said you have to hit that one hundred percent of the time. Yeah, uh, if you hit that, you're at midfield. You still have I don't know like forty seconds or so left. You're sitting pretty. You just have to get like 10 to 20 yards. Yeah, that was that play needs to be completed. How do you feel about, instead of a Hail Mary, going for a 68-yard field goal? I like the decision. Interesting. Did you not? No, I loved it. But I'm weird like that. You're, you hate everything, so I find it weird that you liked that. 
Why did you like it? Because I think he can hit that well, and I think I think the odds are marginally better that he will hit that than a random um, Hail Mary with Calvin Johnson sitting in the end zone waiting for it. Yeah, because he would have caught it. Yeah. Um, but I did want to go back to something you mentioned. Okay. Are you sure you were okay on Monday? Because I know one of your, or actually, I suppose it was Sunday, because one of the things you know, that truly sets up your belief system was found out to be false. I I don't follow you, so I'm really intrigued on where you're going. Zimmer lied to you. Coach Zimmer told a lie. Effing lied. You are absolutely right. I totally <laughs> forgot about that. Because even going... I wanted him to do what he did going into the game, but then he said... Uh, I can't remember which, if it was... There are, there are like two things he does interviews for. I can't remember which one he said it will stunt his growth. We're not going to do that. We don't do that in my defense. That's not something I've done. Yeah. I don't see us doing that. And then it turns out the mon- on Monday, the first day of the week, he had gone up to Xavier Rhodes and said, yeah, you're going to be following Kellen Johnson around. <laughs> he, I, he lied to you. He did. But I think of it this way. Sometimes your parents tell you that there's a Santa Claus. Why? To protect you, because you don't. If if it goes badly, you don't want to be caught with your pants down. So if if he could have theoretically, he wouldn't. He could have thrown uh, what's his name uh, Xavier under the bus if he did terribly, right? Because he could have just said, "Hey, uh, you didn't shadow him very well," and thrown him under the bus. I told him not to do that. I said, stay to the right side or whatever side. Um, so I'm okay with it. I've forgiven him because it looked amazing. When it, I, I, I literally cannot remember ever seeing a Vikings defender able to do that. Yeah. And he, he did have help, so it wasn't like one-on-one. Mm-hmm. But still, in his second year, and this is the type of stuff we saw at the end of last year, when Leslie just said, I don't have time for a cover two anymore. We're just going to man up, and whatever happens, happens. And Xavier came out yep. because he's a man-to-man guy. No one else on the team is a man-to-man guy. Um, yeah, I'm okay with it. Okay. We've talked, him and I. I called him up. I said, you lied to me. And he said, did you like the outcome? And I said, yeah. He's like, there is still a Santa Claus. And I said, I believe you. And I look forward to seeing Santa. Well, not seeing Santa. Seeing what Santa brings me, just like what I what, just like thinking about what Mike Zimmer is going to bring me every week. Okay, I just wanted to make sure you were okay. Yeah, I know it's it is a little sad that you know you think that they're never going to lie to you, and you stand by that, and then they lie to your face. Yeah. So I'll just have to deal with it. Um, speaking of Xavier Rhodes' performance, uh huh. Um, is it just me, or has probably pro football focus just gone completely off the rails this year? How so? Tell me what you mean, Sonny. Um, and I understand they don't grade against a curve. I understand that poor plays on the offense don't benefit Xavier Rhodes. Like, there was at least one play early where, um, Stafford just missed Calvin Johnson, and he was there. Mm Mm-hmm. Overall, in the end, Kelvin Johnson had four catches for 53 yards. Yes. And Pro Football Focus rated Xavier Rhodes, who covered him for most of that time, Mm -hmm. as being awful. It was weird. And it's just like, again, I get they don't grade on a curve, but if Joe Blow comes out and gets four catches for 53 yards, you don't say after the game, man, Joe Blow just killed us. Absolutely. That that's a game. You know, even if that earlier pass was completed and he gained what twenty yards. Mm-hmm. Okay, five catches for um, seventy three yards. I mean, that's a decent game for a receiver. It's a good game, but not it, for him. Not for him, and not. It's nothing special. It's not after the game that you're like, oh man, this that guy. We just couldn't shut him down. Right. And he got and Xavier Rhodes got a terrible score. And last year. 
Pro Football Focus, that was really the first year I used it a lot. You kind of turned me on to it. And I turned you on. Can you say that one more time? To just, it. No, just say the first section. Shut up. <laughs> um, but it generally confirmed what I believed enough that when there was something that seemed a little different, I believed that, okay, I just wasn't seeing things. This season, they are just so far different than what I see on the field. I still can't believe. Remember the Atlanta game? What did our offense do really well in the Atlanta game? Everything? Atlanta's terrible. We ran the ball at will. Yeah. We also did pretty much everything offensively at will. It was mostly running the ball, though. Sure, sure. We had no passing Pro football focus had every offensive lineman have a negative score run blocking. Hmm. Hmm. How is that possible? We averaged five and a half yards per um, carry. I have no idea. And every single <laughs> offensive lineman had a negative run blocking score. I, I don't understand. I think I'm going to have to go back to football outsiders because pro football focus makes no sense to me anymore. You know... I like them, but I've always said I don't think they capture an entire picture. I think they're a section of it. So, like, do I think Matt Khalil is the worst tackle on the left or right side in the National Football League? No. I think right now he's, like, the fourth worst. I don't believe that. I believe he's been terrible this year. Um, It's only a snapshot because I remember a play uh, you and I watched where we saw the replay, and he just got destroyed. Khalil, the guy went right around him, no contest, and you kind of giggled, and you said, who is to blame on that one? Because you hate the fact that I try and tell you that it, it's not as simple as everyone's making it out to be. Um, but then they asked Zimmer about that, since it was so blatant. How in the world could he possibly get... Give get the Khalil out, and he said it wasn't necessarily Khalil's fault because the protection was supposed to be slid to the left, and only person who went left was Khalil. The rest of them, well, really just the left guard Charlie Johnson, who is out for next week, uh, and he didn't play this week either. He did not, thank God. Um, yeah, I wanted to talk about that too. He did not go left, so it didn't help him. So, but it, so it's weird because. He still should win one-on-one battles, which he hasn't been. Uh, but I, I always like Pro Football Focus because it it does it gives you a snapshot into more in depth than the regular naked eye can do for you. But it is strange that sometimes their scores, like I don't think John Sullivan's been that great this year. He's ranked really high. Um. And, you know, there were specific games where it looked like we were doing well, and they didn't think we were doing well. I don't know what to say about that, other than they're probably I've still been also trying to figure out how almost all our defensive linemen grade out really good against the run, but we're giving up four and a half yards per carry. I mean, I think um, Ryan Robinson grades out negatively, but not negative enough negatively enough to justify why there's such a difference between what teams are averaging rushing against us versus um, the grades we're getting. What do you think of it? I think we haven't been doing a good job, especially with Floyd out, of getting pushed into the backfield, blowing up plays. Uh, And I don't think our linebackers are getting off blocks, but that's a separate issue. Hmm. I think I interesting that you say that. So I think I think we will both agree that our best our best interior defensive lineman is probably Sharif. Which I think if we said that going into this year, people would have called us ridiculous. Right. Well, I think people just would have been, oh man, Linville Joseph was that bad. Sure, and it's weird because 
Linval probably has been the most consistent, and his job is to not be called out. Right, he's kind of like an offensive lineman. You don't want to hear about him. Um, it would be nice if eventually he breaks through, but his job is to take two guys out of the mix. Yeah, and he's done that fairly well. Uh, but Sharif, Sharif has got that Kevin Williams type going on where he's got some shiftiness where he can slip through you and tackle that person, uh, which is what you want. It pressure up the middle. So that our ends can can meet at the quarterback and kill them. Yeah, uh, specifically Jay Cutler. Um, they won't be able to meet him again for a while. I wonder where he's going to end up going. But go on. Um, I think I feel like Chad. I like Chad a lot better this year than I did last year. I feel like Chad's his job is also kind of to take on blocks and to be blocked. It's weird to say that, but I think sometimes the goal of a specific player is to actually be blocked, not to move backwards, but to occupy that person long enough for someone else to do something. But even then, I would say, if that's your job, your job is to move that blocker where he's in the way of whoever is coming behind him, not just to be a guy on a body. you got to get some push there. Yeah, well, maybe. I, I think you're probably more right than not. But I wonder if sometimes it's 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 kind of hold the line, right? It's, we're not necessarily, if you can get pushed, if you can push him back, that's that's ideal, right? But we certainly don't want you to be pushed. We at least want you to hold the line. Our goal is you not to move. It's just to, to be a sumo wrestler where both of you can't move and you're just hand slapping each other. Um, but if you can win that battle and push him back and get him outside the ring, that's preferable. I think that's what it requires to be good at this. Sure. I wonder, Gerald Hodges is a lot like Anthony Barr in terms of athletic nature. Now, I think Anthony Barr is more explosive, and Gerald Hodges is certainly more explosive than Chad. Even Even if you compare Gerald Hodges now to Chad when he first started actually playing since he's, you know, old as dirt now, I still think Gerald Hodges is much more explosive, but Anthony Barr is, we're talking the very top end. I think missing Anthony Barr's explosiveness probably hurts you in that realm and shows you what the other linebackers are like on your team with Anthony Barr. You probably look a little better in the, in the linebacking crew without him. You, you look subpar because Gerald that interception against the Jets was nice. It was beautiful. It was one-handed with your back towards the third into the quarter. That might be the most beautiful play of the year. Um, but I don't know what, I mean, maybe you're making some standard plays, but there's no splash. There's You're not winning that. Um, and we're only rushing primarily with four. Um I don't know. I think I definitely think we the linebacking crew needs to be upgraded. Yeah. One spot. I would be very interested to in having Gerald Hodges take over Greenway's position. That would be interesting. Actually, you know, I I like Chad. I think I like his brain. And I've seen it up close. I opened his it's head a up. Sexy damn brain. While he was naked and afraid. Why was he naked? That's not the point. I looked inside that beautiful head of his, and I said, damn, look at that brain. Uh, I I am interested. I don't know if it'll work. I am much more interested in him being our middle linebacker than our outside linebacker. Yeah, you've mentioned that before. I'm not sure if it would work. I'd, I'd like to bring in a new middle linebacker, honestly. Well, I think... Let's just be honest. You have to. If you don't move Chad over, you have to. Jasper Brinkley, it's not going to work out. Yeah, I was having an argument with people on, I think it was Vikings Journal, actually, about this. About uh, Jasper Brinkley? Yeah. He has, like, people are on his side? They were saying we need to replace the weak side linebacker because uh, Brinkley is, or strong side. Okay. No, Greenway is weak now, right? Because he switched with yes, Zimmer. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, you're, right, you're right, you're right, you're right. Um. And their point was, well, look, you can upgrade Brinkley, 
but he comes off the field a third of the, or two thirds of the time anyhow. And I was like, you know what? If you get a good, a really good middle linebacker, then Greenway can be the one who comes off the field on nickel. True, true. And, and so, if you have the option of replacing the worst linebacker or the second worst linebacker, and one of those two is going to be off the field two thirds of the time, anyhow, why not upgrade the worst linebacker? Absolutely. And keep your second one, especially since, like you said, it would be interesting to have Greenway and Hodges compete for that spot next year. Or, I know you mentioned move him to middle, but have Greenway compete with someone. I, I love. Uh, I love if if so, this is impossible, but if we were to get a a um, Luke Keekley on, we would we would probably be unstoppable um, because of his intelligence level and skill. You pair him with um, Anthony Barr and Gerald Orchad. I don't give an s. Um, I would be interested in having. I think Gerald needs a little more development. Maybe he does it in the offseason. Um, I would be interested in seeing Chad and, and him even just rotate. Because I, I think... I'd be fine with that. Because don't you think on like normal run-based plays, Chad is probably maybe a little better. Um, I like Gerald in coverage a little more because he's got he's got more things he can do with his body. Does that make any sense? It does. I, I'm not sure if I agree because it feels like Greenway gets so many tackles so late in plays where I almost prefer a Hodges there. Although Greenway is far less likely to take a terrible angle and just be completely out of place. Say that one more time. Um, really? Greenway is less likely to take a terrible, terrible, horrible angle. Okay, okay. The, I, I heard it the other way around where he was more likely to. No. Which was the case last year. He took some horrific angles, like on Reggie Bush on a 77-yard screen pass. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. But it, I would really like to see a middle linebacker brought in on the offseason, a high draft pick. Unfortunately, we might have to use a high draft pick on the offensive line and pick a position. <laughs> I, don't I know. mean, not pick a position, but... I'm really liking what Khalil's doing lately. I think you have to bring in some real competition. You don't need to bring in the first round competition for him, but you need to bring in someone who might legitimately start the season next year. What happened? Okay, I know what happened to Michael Motti. What happened to Audie Cole? I don't know. That one hasn't made sense to me, especially since you know Brinkley does nothing for me. I mean, literally nothing. I feel the same. Like, why are you even on the team? Yeah. I think one week, I'm not even joking, you played like nine snaps. What the F is your purpose if you play nine snaps? I don't know. No, um, I really thought we'd see more Audi Cole this year. It seems maybe they just had trouble because they couldn't figure out where they wanted to play him because they did try moving him around a bunch. They did. They did. But... No, that's been probably my most surprising personnel decision on defense, that we have not seen more Audi Cole. Maybe, do you think that maybe it's a it's a problem where they they don't grasp it a hundred percent? Like, so there are there are those people who get it right away, right? The obviously Anthony Barr got it yeah. right away. Uh, Chad Greenway probably gets it right away. And then there's the next step where it takes him a little bit, maybe half a year, maybe a year. Do you think that Mike Zimmer, because he still wanted to see where pieces fit, he did the Michael Motti and the Audi Cole, because they both played different positions in the training camp and in the offseason than they had the previous year. Yeah. So do you think, from a mental perspective, that stunted their growth a bit so that they couldn't actually fit all the way through? I'm not sure. I just like that you're really determined to find a way to keep Maudie around. No, to be no, here no. I'm only speaking from a this year perspective, and that's why they don't see the field often. But that maybe in next year they have a better shot. I actually don't think Michael Maudie has a future with this team anymore, which... That hurts you, doesn't it? I just don't. 
I don't get it. I mean, I I don't. I obviously don't see him on the field to be able to see if he's good or not. But he had a lot of promise for. He was one of those guys that fell due to injury, and we knew it would take him a while, even in that first full year. And he 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 did well, but he's the kind of guy. He's ferocious, works hard all the time. He's a Zimmer type guy, and he didn't. He never even came close. No, and now he's injured again. Yeah, but they say it's 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 not, minor, but yeah, I you don't like to hear oh four surgeries in five seasons. Well, See the the fourth was a knee scope, which I have had, and it's almost nothing. But he did have three ACL surgeries, which is usually a bad thing. Yep. Um, what is going on? Yeah. Um, I I don't think he's gonna be with the team next year. I I don't know. I don't I don't know. They'll invite him to training camp probably, and then we'll see. It's not like he costs a lot. No. Um, but speaking of questionable personnel problem or decisions, okay. So Zimmer said we're going to, you know, spread out the carries a little bit. Norv Turner said, "Fine, I'll give a couple more carries to other people." But now I'm designing <laughs> pass plays to Asiata. Brilliant. You know why that's brilliant, though? Oh God! Think about this. Because he. I You're think so on irate. that last play... <laughs> You're so irate, you can't even think straight. On the last play where he got the ball, I think he ran for seven yards, thought, what, you what? know what, someone must have touched me by now, so I better start falling forward. And so that's how he got nine yards, when really we could have used at least the first down. If you weren't going to get out of bounds, <laughs> at least get the first down. Instead, he just falls down a yard short, always a yard short. Not okay. always. Often a yard short. Yes, often. I mean, his average is usually a good yard short of what a decent, even an adequate average is. I don't know that a yard is appropriate. It's more than a yard. But I see you're trying to stick with the one. <laughs> uh, Pass plate. Multiple. Design. Multiple designed <laughs> straight to... Asin Otter, I think is his nickname now. Asin Otter. Do you know you know why it's brilliant though, right? You, because you have to everyone know you hope people will laugh, except for apparently Asiata was one of the people laughing and just falling down. Because there's no one on the planet that expects that. No one. And you know what? They didn't expect it, and it still didn't matter. He just fell down. That's because Asiata also didn't expect it. He was like, uh huh, that was a good joke, guys, in the walkthrough. We're not really going to do it. <laughs> and then they go in the huddle, it's called, and the whole time he's lining back up, he's like, oh my God, we're going to do this. Oh my God, we're going to do this. My mom's going to see this. And then it happens, and he just gets so excited, he falls. That's, that's what happens. The sad thing is, early in the game, he was actually hitting people hard, which is what people always say he does, but he doesn't actually do. And I was even having fun with it. It's like, holy crap, he's hitting. These people hard and, you know, hitting, knocking them backwards for once. In a game where I thought he played as hard and as well as he did, he got 36 yards on 11 carries. Look at you liking Asiata. I don't... I th- 11 carries for 36 yards. That is terrible. You you liking him is a bit uncomfortable. I mean... You were enjoying the- that during the game because it was just... It was like a child... Having random success at something, and you're just like, oh, how ridiculous is this? It was. This? I'm not going to lie. It almost exactly was like that. Um, I don't want to talk about Ass and Otter anymore. I, I don't understand Norv Turner's decision with that. He came out and said that we're definitely going to stick with him more. It's like, fine, we'll just make our offense be terrible. Well, let's just be honest. Who else is going to go out? I'd take Banyard or Tate or not Asin Otter. Not Asin Otter? You. You'd, uh, I would go, why can't we put Christian back there? Fine. He'd probably have a better average. He would. He's the king of slip. He can slip inside and out. He can do lots of things. Just don't ask him to pass the ball or read a defense. But if you hand him the ball, he doesn't have to do any of those things. He'd be brilliant. I want to re-sign him as our third running back. 
then he'd still be on the sidelines, and then I'd have to see him. Can I tell you a secret? It <laughs> wouldn't be a secret then. Well, it, it is to you right now. <laughs> okay, that's not a secret. It's something I don't know. <laughs> Can I let you in on a secret? Okay. Do you know that, I, th- I believe it was the Star Tribune, major publication. So this is not at all a secret. It was published in the newspaper. <laughs> shh, shh. Ready? <laughs> there is zero chance of that. Let me ask you a question. Because they were saying probably Castle makes too much money and we might want to leave. So why not sign a guy who's been in the system and is cheap as hell? Okay, it's just hiccuping. Never mind. Let me ask you a question. I feel what you're, I feel what you're laying down. I feel what you're... I'm hip to your jive, okay? Let's get a sixth-round quarterback, a seventh-round quarterback, and let him... Actually, be- I'm, I'm willing to invest a higher draft pick than that. But you hate everything below basically third round. Or is it fourth? Not remember. really, but I'm just saying the bar is really low for being able to replace Ponder. Sure. Now, if you had to make a choice, I, I you have to. Okay. You can't choose none. You can't choose... We'll Seventh ju- rounder over Ponder. No, you can't just choose, we'll have an open space. You have to choose, you get to keep one. You have to keep one. You know where this is going. We can either keep number 44, or we can keep number seven. You keep Ass and Otter. <gasps> Oh because he has a place, it's just North Turner doesn't use him correctly. Do you you understand what just happened, right? I've been saying this all year. I've said repeatedly, I just don't like how North Turner uses Ass and Otter. You're just you're I'm gonna drive that, that home all the way. Yep. We're gonna spread that nickname. Well, you know, I'm hoping that next year we actually have a real running back. Hoping. Yes. I think I'm 50-50. I almost cried. Can we talk about this for a second? I, I actu- suppose. I actually did cry. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not afraid to admit this. Adrian Peterson, if you ever listen to this podcast, this is the one you want to listen to where I tell you I cried over a story. It was, it was actually heartbreaking a bit because in the, in the articles written after his appeal was denied, um, I think we all expected his appeals to be his appeal to be denied. I mean, it was basically appealing to Roger Goodell's evil twin. Um, but those the articles that ESPN did, and I'm not even a big fan of ESPN in general. But the article that they did, where they talked to him for an hour, you could just tell that he doesn't really care. I mean, he's gonna go after the money and get them his money back, his four million that he's losing. But that's not the goal. He just wants to play effing football. And you could... There was a, a overwhelming sense for me that this this really did a lot... You're laughing at me. This really did <laughs> I a find lot... It interesting what you find heartbreaking. But I, there are much worse things in the world. I fully believe that. I understand that. But for a guy who does never talk, right? He doesn't... Anything he's ever said was optimism. I'll come back from this knee injury, or you know, taking a picture in the hospital bed with the top hat on. That's funny, Adrian Peterson. That's all he ever does, or makes a weird comment about slavery. And but he never talks sad, even when his kid died. He never really talked about it. So for him to basically say, "I've thought about retirement. This is really difficult." That was a picture into Adrian Peterson. I don't think people will ever actually see. And it was it was nice. It was refreshing that even... Because he's at the top. Do, what's left for him? To stamp his first ballot to the Hall of Fame? To break more records that he... Get a Super Bowl? Sure. But those are... Those are kind of goals for everybody. He's done a lot. Yeah. He's probably going to make the Hall of Fame if he never plays again. He won't be first ballot. It'll be interesting. I'm not but sure, but... They'll play YouTube videos of highlight reels for him. And you, he's going to get in off that. Um, and, and he did 2,000 yards after an ACL. But to see that he just wants to go out and play football. He doesn't... I really think he'd play for free. Even though he said that he'd 
doesn't need to take a discount. Um, I really think he'd play for free. He just wants to play. That was sad. And I think before that, I was actually leaning that he would never play with the Vikings again. That made me lean the other direction. Maybe I'm just heart, hearty about it. Uh, full of heart, loving Adrian Peterson. But imagine how different this team would be with Adrian Peterson. A lot different. Although I read an article that was really awesome about how not having Adrian Peterson was the best thing that could ever happen to Teddy Bridgewater. I can guess how that article went, but I'm not sure I agree. Because I think having an offense that's on the field more would help Teddy as well. And having an offense that allows him to run a regular offense where maybe he's able to throw down the field more often instead of having to do these quick dump-offs because they're not respecting our run game and they're just coming right after him because Azia will just fall forward anyhow. Um, so I, I'm sure the whole argument was this forced him to lead. This meant everything was on his shoulders. He couldn't you know, cop out. I, I'm, I understand the appeal of that logic, but I think it's wishful thinking. Um, I think I think you're right that yeah, it would be nice to see him do a real offense, you know, with actual blocking and actual players behind him, not Asiata. Uh, or how do you say his name again? Asinader. Asinader. This just feels weird to say. I'm not gonna lie, but it. I do think. I read another article, um, actually it was a, a little blip on Twitter, that the things Teddy does well, and I, I 100% agree with this, is, <clears throat> excuse me, is he is good at adapting, and he's good at reading a defense and knowing where to go. I think he's not at his peak. Uh, you see some bad plays that show that, but he. it's been a while since we've seen a quarterback check in and out of plays, read a defense and find soft spots. It's been a long time since we've seen It has been. And I think, actually, that they were saying that that's kind of why he was bad at his pro day. There is no coverage to read. It's designed routes. And, yes, he should have been good at that. But it's kind of like competition, right? Some people just rise to the top when they're facing it. I think Teddy is that guy. Um I don't think he gets that same thing out of it if Adrian's behind him. I think it comes, but I think I don't think you have as much of uh, emphasis on him unless it's a primetime game. I think then he would rise to the top. But here on stupid noon games that no one in the country is watching, including Minnesota, I don't think he rises like he did this year because he doesn't really have to. Not that he doesn't have to. The team doesn't need him to. Where now it's, there's no one else. You're the only one that can move, that can make this happen. So either you do it or no one does it. And he has met that and exceeded it. Has he? Absolutely. Uh, See, I feel there are lots of things about Teddy I like. I'm very excited about his future. But our offense has been god awful this year. We're 26, 27, 28 in basically every major offensive category. Okay. To say that he's met and exceeded, our offense is awful. We we scored 14 points and then didn't score again for the rest of the game and only have one drive where you can really say the offense did a decent job and then the field goal was blocked. The other field goals, you can't... I don't give the offense a lot of credit for setting up a 50-plus yard field goal. I don't either. Um, and certainly not a 68-yard field goal. The offense does not get credit for <laughs> Oh, well, at least they set up an, a field goal attempt. Um, there, I think we just have not seen... We You talked earlier about things we have not seen that mm-hmm. we're seeing with Teddy. I think those things are so exciting to us, we are discounting that... I think coming into this week's game, we averaged 16.6 points on offense a game. That obviously dropped because we only scored 14. 
um, 16.6 offensive points. Yeah, if you yeah, yeah. include defense and special teams, that goes up. Obviously. Um, 16.6 points. It's bad. Is terrible. Actually, I'm going to agree with you 100%. That is terrible. <laughs> um, Pucher. And yeah, he, he has some drives. Those first two touchdown drives were just things of beauty. Really enjoyed them. Um, but then this offense has a lot of three and outs or one or maybe two first downs and then outs. We, we punt a lot. We do with a bad punter. (laughs) With a bad punter. Um, no, I'm very excited about Teddy. I want to see what he will do with a real offense, and I don't think we have that because of the Adrian Peterson situation, McKinnon out, North Turner's insistence that Aston Otter should get double-digit carries. Um, I Our wide receivers aren't great. I don't think they're terrible, but I don't think that you need a huge upgrade there. It would be nice to have one big wide receiver, but I don't think that's what's holding us back in the passing game. More I'd like to actually see if we can get um, the tight ends going, which was supposed to be a thing. And Rudolph, I know, has been hurt, but you still have other tight ends who can catch. Chase Ford, Ellison has occasionally flashed some hands. Um, I don't know. I Again, I think... I found it interesting how excited people are for taking all that and ignore all the other analytical side of it, which says, holy shit, this offense just does not get enough first downs, yards, points, hold on to the ball, (laughs) all that stuff. I think... I want to be different than we've been in the past. In the past, when you had a guy who semi-rose to prominence, and and I use that term very loosely because I do not consider what Charles Johnson has done for this team as a wide receiver, prominence. No. But in the past, we've then said, okay, we're going to take this into the next season, and we want to see you do better. We want to see you rise even further. We did it last year to this year with Cordero Patterson, although it's still it's a different scheme and everything, so it's a bit different. But we seem to do that. I don't want to. I think I I think Teddy has done an amazing job because he has he's 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 doing things without the consistent things around him. He is the only one who's been consistent and growing. Yes, Charles Johnson has been growing, but do we know that it's because of our record and Teddy, or is it because he actually has the skill set? Greg Jennings is starting to show up again, but where the F was in the beginning of the season when we probably could have used him a little more? Um, I'm not... I feel like Greg has a bad attention span for a team that's slightly rebuilding. I like him, and I think he does an excellent job with other wide receivers around him, teaching them things. And I loved in training camp when he was taking DBs to the side and telling them what wide receivers are thinking. Um, I'm just not sure in actual games that he gives 100% effort on a team that isn't going to the playoffs. Um, Outside of that, what did you have at wide receiver? Next to nothing. I like Jarius Wright, but he didn't really do a whole lot. You had no one at running back. I mean, Jarek McKinnon grew. That was nice. And then he was gone. Uh, Rudolph, gone. Chase Ford, great, but we're, we're looking for more. And Rhett Ellison is a primary blocker. Plus, he had almost no offensive line, for unless you're counting the Falcons game. That's it. But the Falcons can't rush anybody. Literally, they could do a zero and, rush, and I don't think they get past the offensive line. And let's not forget that with no running game, that makes your offensive line look worse. Yes, <clears throat> but that's why I, I think 
Teddy has done so many remarkable things because he hasn't had really the stuff behind it. Can you think of another tandem in this? And we're not even, we didn't even bring up Cordero Patterson. That's how far he's fallen off the face of the planet. But can you think of a better, a wor- I'm sorry, a worse concoction of running back and wide receivers than Charles Johnson, Greg Jennings, Matt Asiata? I bet they're worth some because like in most first <laughs> round, lots of first round picks are quarterbacks, the first overall pick, and those teams are usually god awful. Sure. So I doubt this is the worst any quarterback has had to deal with. I don't remember who was on the Raiders when Jamarcus Russell was drafted. Oh, um, boy, I don't either. That was a long time ago. I don't remember who Peyton Manning had his first year, but I know that Colts team was Marvin Carter. Harrison. Was that? The, I thought he came. Oh, my leg hurts. That same year or later? Can but, I stand up? Are you staring at me? Are you checking me out? No. Do you want me to take my pants off? No. Do you like it when I ask these questions? No. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. Uh, I don't know uh, who they had. But, I, I mean, that's why I disagreed with the idea of not having Peterson. I would like to see him run an offense with actual players. And I'm not saying all those offensive stats that I was talking about are his fault. They certainly are not. Certainly not nearly just his fault. Um, he's had his issues. Um, especially, you seem to say... Like Greg Jennings checked out early in the season and has been better lately. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if that was him or just quarterback play. Because I also remember stories of Greg Jennings telling Bridgewater what Bridgewater needed to be doing. And then Bridgewater seemed to get better. I feel like it was more of a I mean, be yourself, not a... Well, it was also look. anticipate and stuff like that. Get a, to us coming out of the breaks, but that's neither here nor there. Um, I I have found it interesting though how little concern there is about our offense, considering or how much praise there is coming this way, okay. considering how bad. I almost punched you in the face for that comment. Um, our offense has been. It's that's why I don't want to stand pat. I think. You have, I think you have some definite pieces. It's kind of like, uh, I saw on Twitter, <laughs> I saw on Twitter last night, that last night was basically the best toilet bowl possible of a game. Jaguars against the Titans. Toby had a decent game. I started Toby. I picked him up and started him immediately. Didn't make any sense. He, he had a touchdown. He did. He did. I was fine with it. And they didn't give him many carries, but he averaged almost four and a half yards per carry. I still believe in Toby, but I also saw another account. That's a, You want to talk about another quarterback that did not have help. I didn't even have to go to previous years. That Jaguars team is pretty terrible. Uh, yeah, yeah, but they're in 100% rebuilding mode, right? So that's slightly different. Um but they, they mentioned on the Tennessee side that they are horrific right now. But if you think about it, they have some major pieces. They've got a, a nice, young, wide receiver core. Um, you've got Delaney Walker, who is a very nice tight end, although on the older side. Um, you've got Bishop Sankey, who should be good going forward. You need a competent quarterback, which they don't have. Um, Charlie Whitehurst. Uh, is not a competent quarterback, and he's your best. Um, I mean, granted, they've had injury issues, too. Otherwise, they yes. would have been, um, what is the quarterback they drafted this year? Metten something? Zach or Mettenberger? Yes. Um, but that's where it gives me hope, because we have some nice pieces. Oh, we have a lot of nice pieces. But that's where I want to go out, and I want a Jeremy Macklin in free agency. Or I want to spend the number one pick on a wide receiver. Oh, I want to improve that line so badly. I do, too. I do, too. That's why if you can get Macklin, then you can... Actually, I'm okay either or because Mike Ayupati, I would be fine with just... What do you need? Just I'll give you this check. You write down what you want. 
you'll come over. Yeah, I guess I haven't looked at who's going to be available in free agent or the draft. Time. I did hear that um, Teddy's favorite target from his college days might be worthy of a first-round pick. He is worthy of a first-round pick. He will be worthy of a first-round pick before we pick. <laughs> That's where he'll be. But you can get... You can... Let's kill two birds with one stone, sweetheart. You can trade down, because you're going to be semi-high. You can trade down some, get probably a second-round pick out of it, because you'll be mildly high. And you can draft his high school teammate, who played well in college and is also worth a first-round pick. Um, You can get him, which probably fits in our system a little better. And then you can draft offensive lineman galore in the second round. Do you like it that I'm basically dancing for you now? Yeah. Yeah, I guess. I'd still also really like to improve the middle. Oh, stop. I'd really like to improve the middle linebacker spot. Kind of was thinking about using the first round pick for that. I don't know. I haven't looked at the draft, so I don't yeah. really know. We're what about- getting way ahead of ourselves. We don't know where we'll be drafting. It will very much depend on how these next two games go. Speaking of which, do we want to talk Miami quick? We're already over an hour. God, we just have so much fun together. I think they win. What hi-ya! I would feel better about this game if it was in Minnesota, them having to come here. Um, I think whatever the over-under is on this game, we should take the under. Interesting. Okay. Um, but why the hell not? I'll say the Vikings win. I think... Um, the Vikings defense could stop Tannehill from scoring very many points, and that we will score just enough. Oh, but it does. Miami has another good defensive line. They do. Um, if the interior holds up a decently, like they did last week, they held up better than we had any reason to expect them to. Granted, Nick Fairley was out, but, but they held up. Better than we had any right to expect. I think you'd agree with that. Yeah. Um, If they do so again this week, I think that's a lot of proof that Charlie Johnson should not have been starting. I I think you're going to see that. I I think that's another one of North Turner's questionable decisions on his depth chart. I, you know, yes, I'm going to agree with you, kind of. I'll agree with you halfway. You just can't agree. <laughs> I, I I didn't like him going into the season. I didn't like him going into last season. No. But, and I don't like um, the guy who's replacing him, whose name I always say wrong, so I won't. But Teddy said that this is as much as his franchise as it is Teddy's franchise. That's he actually, true. That's the guy he named out. Yes, it is. Uh, my favorite, uh, Mr. Arif on Twitter, He uh, we should just tell him to listen to our podcast. He'd probably find delight. He's a little weird. Um he said last night also on Twitter that he doesn't understand how that player, Vlad, how he has a position in the NFL even as a backup. That literally it, people on the this street This was Rick Spielman's back. thing that I was... Lots of people have been complaining about Rick Spielman for other things. This was the not replacing Charlie Johnson and at best finding Dukakis or whatever his name is. What? It doesn't matter. We're not going to say it right. And he won't be on the team next year. Yeah. Um, that was a terrible decision. Um, but I think the when you change coaching staff and offensive staffs... There was games. no coaching staff that either of those two players were going to be good for. Sure, but I can understand keeping Charlie be, for continuity's sake. But then you have to bring someone in better than who he did. But anyhow, go on with what you were going to say. Well, actually, I just said it. In fact, that it happened already. Okay. We, we, that was the best. The, that was your point that you were building up to. Yeah. You kept him for continuity. Yes. Okay. Um. I was thinking about talking about Patterson since he actually got in at the end of the game, but I don't know. It's hard to say there was anything there. Um, he got in because of injury. Yeah, I would still like to see him used more. I still find it hard to believe you can't find something, especially since he seems to be our best jump up and go get it guy. Um, even when he hasn't been running routes, 
I don't. Who else is? Is Greg Jennings that guy? Charlie Johnson. They specifically talk about how he's not good about fighting for the ball when he's being hit on each side. Um, at least maybe he is. What? Maybe he is. You're. You're. You might be right. Because there's no one else that can be that guy. Jarius Wright isn't tall enough or jump high enough. He's uh, feisty enough, but and we they, saw Patterson do that, especially Tampa Bay. He had those really big plays on the sideline. I still find it odd that we can't find a way to use that. But I think it was the Falcons game also. So I feel like he made some nice sideline catches at home before he died. Um but. Yeah, I guess I keep hearing that the problem with him is depth. So you need to run a 10-yard and then do something. And sometimes it'll be 12, sometimes it'll be 6. You just literally have no idea where he'll be. And I'm assuming that's a semi-easy fix. I mean, they do have hash marks all over the place, so count them. You would think so. Um, you would think they just uh, okay ten yards. That means you go up to this hash mark. Yeah, yeah. Just say it right before the play. I will be expecting you to be at the thirty-eight. That's the third one after the thirty-five. <laughs> um, hmm. I don't know. I do want to upgrade. The, I think obviously you're going to upgrade the offensive line. Although, although <clears throat> maybe you don't. Oh, God, I hope. Maybe. Maybe. Are you going to pin your hopes on a fifth-round draft pick? Well, yes and no. (laughs) I actually think Joe Berger has been playing really well, oddly enough. And I say oddly enough because almost every time we ask him to come in, he plays pretty well for long spurts. But we never give him a chance at a starting job. No. It makes he is like Mr. Consistency. He's like Shamar Stefan. Shamar Stefan, our defensive tackle, they all talk about he's Mr. Consistent. He can't make really any splash plays, which is part of the problem. But he won't do something that really hurts you. That's like Joe Berger. So why don't you put him in left guard? You bring in get Fusco back at right guard, get Johnny Sullivan. And, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. you got to bring in some competition for um, Khalil. Unless you think one of those tiny... Well, tiny Richardson. He is intriguing. Because I wish... But I don't know that that's enough. I don't know that don't you want to go into the next season and say, let's hope either Khalil or Tiny figures it out and doesn't get our franchise quarterback killed. True. Yeah. Uh, although, if you have a competent running back, that helps. And, and I will even say, Jarek McKinnon on a second year is a competent quarterback, a competent running back. Um, so you don't need necessarily Adrian Peterson back, which would assist you. Um, yeah, I keep reading stories about Jarek and his pass protection just went from completely unacceptable to... Well, he'd never done it. Right. right. He didn't even He know was a quarterback. Was. Yeah, he was a triple option quarterback. So he was like the worst possible. Are you doing Nick's dishes? No. I feel like that was a lie. Bold. I... Lie. Don't eat. do dishes. Just say that sentence. No, I was going to say I carry out, so I just throw everything away. He actually cooks food and makes food. So they're... I have plates, I suppose, but I don't believe you. He, the dishwasher does most of the plates. I don't know if that's true. Um, I think, <laughs> uh, I think, I think we'll also win. I, I'm going to take the over though, because yes, I like Miami's defensive line. They really don't have any secondary and. They're a bit of a mess right now. I like Tannehill. They have no running back. They're kind of like us in that respect. And Mike Wallace, he just refuses to catch the football with two hands. He's like, Odell Beckham, please, I got one hand. Except that he doesn't have one hand, except on rare occasions. But he keeps trying, so I give him participation award. But he fails a lot. 
And that's their number one and kind of their number two. They don't even have a good number two. So I think we'll win and I think we'll be over. Especially, this is Teddy and uh, Charles. This is their homecoming. It is. And Xavier. And I guess... I guess... You can just stick Xavier on one side. You don't need to shadow Wallace. That's stupid. Um, I think we'll win. All right. Anything else? I have nothing pressing. Do you have anything pressing? Do you want to talk about how I took my belt off in the middle of this? Not because no. I'm fat, because I was dancing for you. All right. And that'll be it. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye.